Yo, 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 what's going on out there? Welcome back to Building Blocks for Mental Health, where I empower you to continue to build into becoming the best versions of yourselves. Welcome back. And um, to my new viewers, hey, like, subscribe, share. Thanks for checking in. Because today, today, ooh, we got a juicy topic. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's been making some serious waves, y'all. In the media, we are going to be talking about exploitation in the music industry. But most notably, we're going to be talking about the exploitation that has possibly occurred um, at the hands of Sean Honey, I mean, um, P. Diddy Combs, who home was recently uh, raided by Homeland Security. So we ain't going to be holding back. And um, we're going to be unpacking how exploitation affects artists, um, how it messes with their heads, with a special focus on some of the artists who we believe may have been exploited by, by Diddy, Black Rob, Sean, and even Cassie, the ex-girlfriend of no other than Sean Honeycombs, I mean P. Diddy Gomes. So get ready to roll with us as we uncover the harsh realities of the music industry. And, um, and in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down what exploitation is and how it has messed with these artists' heads and what are the steps, you know, whether it be an artist that has been impacted by exploitation, um, what are the steps that you can take to cope and rise above this chaos? And by the end of this video, you'll understand the mental toll of exploitation in the music game and how we can all work together to change the game for the better. So lock in, load up, let's go, let's get into it. So first things first, let's get real about exploitation in the music industry. And it, and it certainly, it's not a joke, it's not a fairy tale. It's a harsh reality that's been going down for decades, leaving artists broken and bruised and um, in its wake. But uh, what, what exactly is exploitation? All right, well, let me fill you in. So exploitation happens when labels and big wigs such as Sean P. Diddy and the industry take advantage of artists' talent, dreams, and hustle for their own game. So what some of these big wigs may do is they'll make big promises, they'll have these artists sign contracts that ain't worth the paper that is printed on, and, it'll, and, uh, and uh, they'll leave these artists high and dry, and when they're done, trust me, there'll be nothing left. And trust me, they've been doing it for years. So I bet, you know, some of you are probably wondering, well, why do you keep falling for it? If we if we know that this has been going on for years, why do these artists keep falling into this trap? Well, I don't think it's just it's just it's just a lack of, of negligence. I don't think it's just that, but I think it's a mix of factors that contributes to it. So one of the things if we're being fair about it, many of these artists come from poverty. They're they're facing struggles that most folks can't even imagine. And they see the music industry as their ticket out. They see it as their shot at making it big. And they see it as their shot at breaking generational cycles of poverty. But what they don't realize is, is that the game is rigged from the jump. And let's not forget about the artists who just want to do it for the love. And these are artists that are driven by passion, by the love of the game, by the, by the dream of making it big and leaving their mark on the world. But that passion can blind you. And when you're that blinded, it can leave you open to shady deals and empty promises being thrown your way. So let's talk a little bit about how Diddy comes in effect, y'all. Let's talk about what I call the Diddy effect. Let's talk about one of the biggest names in the music industry, Diddy. He's a legend, no doubt about it. But even leg legends, can get their skeletons out the closet. And Diddy's no exception to that. You know, maybe with, with his home being uh, raided by Homeland Security, you know, maybe it's a possibility that some of these things that has been talked about for years, you know, some of the band, you know, the uh, Fred from the band, you know, talked about being exploited. Dylon from the band. Mace, Mace and Beth, they talked about um, being exploited, right? There's a lot of artists 
that have came out over the past years and, is, and, and talked about being exploited by Sean P. Diddy Combs and it's always been minimized and it's always been talked about how these artists should have did this and these artists should have did that you should have read the contract you should got a, you should got a better a better lawyer but what you don't stand or what you we, we often don't stand to, um to realize is a lot of these artists don't have the resources that they need so there's a disproportionate power dynamic in these situations that's being um that's often contributing to these artists being taken advantage of so take take black rob for example black rob was one of diddy's artists back in the day um you might remember hits like whoa and can i live but behind the scenes you know black rob was struggling he was battling health issues um he was having financial troubles and um in his in one of his you know most dire times of need he felt abandoned by the very label that made him a star. And then, you know, let's talk about another artist. Let's talk about Shine. Who remembers Shine, right? One of Diddy's artists, he was on top of the world, sounded like Biggie, that was the thing back in the day. He had a voice that made him sound like Big. He was riding high on the success of hits like Bad Boys and Bonnie and Shine. But then he caught a case, a suspect case, right? Right, a case that allegedly might not even have been his. Maybe taking a, a, a case for his boy, right? But I'm, you know, not. I'm not going. I'm not going to say that's what it is. But that's what a lot of people thought. Sean did a lot of time. He did some time behind bars, and fortunately, he was able to come out a changed man. But he went from being the next big thing to another cautionary tale of what happens or what may happen when you do business with Diddy, when you get on Bad Boy. And let's not forget about Cassie, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, right? She was signed to his label too. So she dropped some hits. She dropped Me and You and A Long Way to Go. But behind the scenes, you know, um, allegedly she was being abused. Um, she was she was being forced to engage in, um, in sex trafficking, all types of things that were going on. She was being forced to take drugs. She was struggling and she felt trapped in that toxic relationship. And um, she was possibly exploited for her talents and her looks and left to fend for herself when it all fell apart. But thankfully, listen, Cassie kept some receipts. So she was wise enough to keep some receipts, you know, and get connected with some supportive individuals that was able to help her be in a situation where she could be financially compensated. Now, listen, I know I know money money can't fix trauma. It certainly can't. And there's no amount of money that will ever be able to cure the amount of horror that Cassie may have went through. But I will say that sometimes, I don't know, financial compensation, I would like to have $30 million. And sometimes financial compensation can just help with making your life a little bit more manageable. So let's talk a little bit about the real fallout of exploitation. Um, and the mental health crisis that it leaves in its wake. When these artists are exploited, when they're chewed up and spit out by the industry, it takes a toll on their mental health like you wouldn't believe. So imagine pouring your heart and your soul into your music and grinding day in and day out to make your dreams a reality, only to have it all snatched away from you by some greedy label executive. And it's enough to break anybody's spirit, y'all, to leave them feeling lost, hopeless, and alone. And I think, you know, these type of things probably play a huge role in why so many artists pass away so young or pass away unexpectedly to, to things like suicide and substance use related challenges. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, exploitation can lead to a whole host of mental health issues from anxiety and, the, and depression, like I just mentioned, to substance abuse and even suicide. So when these artists feel like they're being used, like they're nothing more than commodities to be bought and sold, it can shatter their sense of self-worth and leave them feeling like they're not good enough like and like they'll never be good enough, and which essentially leads to them, you know, never recovering at times. But here's the thing, even in the face of exploitation, there's hope. And there's, there's a way to cope, to rise above the chaos and to reclaim your mental health. And it's, it's not easy, but it's certainly possible. So 
First off, it's important to know your worth, to recognize that you're more than just a commodity to be bought and sold. You're a human being with dreams, with talent, with a voice that deserves to be heard. So don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Next, hey, listen, everybody's a snake sometimes, especially, you know, um, when you navigating in the grass. So you got to keep the grass cut so that you can see them when they come in. And ah, so I'm, I'm not going to finish the rest. But that's just the, that's just the significance of making sure that you have a proper support system. When with, and within your support system, you want to make sure that you got people who really have your back no matter what, whether it's family, friends, or fellow artists who've been through the same struggles. And having a support system can make all the difference when you're feeling lost and alone. Lastly, I want to just say, hey, don't, don't be afraid to speak up. You know, don't be afraid to tell your story and shine a light on the shady deals and empty promises being thrown your way or the questionable and shady things that you're being asked to do. You know, the more we talk about exploitation in the music industry, the more we can do to change the system and ensure that these artists are treated with respect and the dignity, and the dignity that they deserve. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. Don't be afraid to carve out your own path and make your own destiny. The music industry may be full of vultures looking to exploit you, but that don't mean you gotta play their game. Find your own lane. Stay true to yourself and keep pushing forward no matter what. That's how you beat the system. That's how you come out on top. So trust and believe, you got this. So hey, this is this is Jermaine Wright, your LPC, um, continuing to empower you all to co continue to build in to becoming the best versions of yourself. And if you haven't already do, done so, I just want to say, hey, you know, hit that like button. I appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button and share this information with someone who you believe it will help. And until next time, I will see you on the next episode of Building Blocks for Mental Health. I'll see you soon.